Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of the Jam and Cheese Show. The last edition for 2023. Uh, Cheese, how are you going? Yeah, I'm actually relatively good. Um, we finished up our army camp 11 a.m. I'm here at 12, so... <laughs> that um, is dedication I'm putting in to the, the Jam and Cheese Show. Putting in the hard yards, uh, running off about 40 minutes sleep. But um, yeah, it was, it was a good camp. It wasn't like... Uh, it was more of a camp that had like a like a goal, like to to create team bonding and all that. And there wasn't like the people running it were SAS people, but they weren't like ones with egos that talked down to you. Like all the instructions were clear. And um, the best thing about it was all of everyone brought in. Like there wasn't a person that slacked off or quit. And and I got to take my tip my hat to like a lot of the young blokes and the people on train and trial. Um, but my massive tip, tip to the cat would be our skip James, James Tedesco. He he come in. That was his first day. He he's meant to be, he's meant to be on holiday still. Um, him Victor Radley, and and they come in day one and did an army camp, two day army oh, wow. camp. And like to to be fair to to Jimmy, like he was leading a lot of the stuff, you know. And that just goes to show, I guess the. The champion sort of player he is like i don't think i'm after my off season i'm rolling in and being able to lead a lot of the events and um do that but um really shows you why he is one of the tip top players of our generation really yeah it speaks volumes little things like that and that the impact yeah he has on his teammates by showing that i'm the, i'm gonna come yeah. even though i should be off or i'm entitled i'm entitled to time mm. off but I want to go above and beyond. Yeah, well, that's this is like uh, it's just another level of respect. Like obviously yeah. he's got a massive level of respect, but for me, it, when I seen him do all that, it just it just even built a bigger one to why he's one of the best players of our our late generation. So, yeah, I agree with that. Um, that's massive. That, but talk us through the feelings in army camp. You just spoke about finishing off with the stretcher with the 80 kilos. And yeah, I think back to some of the times I've done that and that, oh. I, I this, like there Not was fun. aspects where it was easy, where it was like cognitive testing, where it's just like you working as a team, but the, the, the physical ones, like we did a lot of physical challenges and um, it's just amazing what your body can actually do. Like after a, like a first reps, like my first 10 reps of push ups, and that I was like, there's no way I can I can do this. Like yeah, I'm got. And then, I'm, I'm feeling then pretty like We here. did. We yeah. were doing like a hundred reps of things. Like they, and like you look up and go. There's no way like I can actually get through that. And then somehow you're six hours later into the physical drilling and you're like, mate, I'm, my body's still going here. Like, um, so I guess just finding out what your body really is capable, even even if you're not conditioned, like. Finding out what your brain can make your body do, um, that's the big takeaway. And, um, yeah, just being able to work as a team at the same time so is pretty awesome. Any strugglers? Not really, bro. Like, there's people that struggled, but no one ever stopped. Mm. No one really complained. Like, it was it was a full buy-in, and I think that's what made the, the whole thing a lot easier because a lot of those physical drills when you're in a team, if, if there's one guy that's just like, stuff this, I'm not doing this. Like even Dom Young, he was there. Oh, yeah. He did, like, they, they were all meant to be on holiday, but he was there. Like, that that was huge for a lot of the players. And Spencer Lenu, he was there. Like, well, he's just come back from Vegas as well. Just come back from Vegas straight in. And, like, I think they said they weren't going to do everything, but they did everything, like... Um, it was a massive buy-in, and it, I guess the, the vibe around the club at the right moment is just is massive for morale. So, did you get um, sleep deprived? Yeah, well, like they gave us reasonable amount of time to sleep, but there's some heavy snorers uh, in that crew, and <laughs> I had to wake up every 20 minutes. Mate, Teddy woke me up and he's like, "Hey, mate, can you uh, can you go stop him from snoring?" I was like, straight up threw a big coffee cup at one of the boys and hey, roll to your side, please stop snoring. <laughs> And then sure enough, he rolled back on his back and then uh, snore again. So uh, it was a tough, tough night's sleep. Um, I was eating frozen bread because I had no food. So Frozen bread? I went and opened the fridge up. There's some frozen white bread in there. I was like, yeah, that'll do just to get stuck, line the stomach. Um, but yeah, it was it was an awesome camp. I'm just, I'm stoked to be finished now. Mm. But 
So um, hol- you're on holiday now for a couple of weeks? On holiday now, yep. I'll take off tomorrow, um, Melbourne for a little bit. Yeah, nice. Nice. What, what will you be doing for Christmas, Christmas Day? Uh, spend some time with the Mrs. Family. And then Christmas Day, I'll be in Brisbane with my, my actual family. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, uh, it's been a big news uh, or big news week. Uh, and the only one place to start with, how do you feel? Um, Jerome Luai, imagine what he's feeling. Let's run the jingle, Charlie. How do you feel, Jimmy? Let's find out. Thanks to Tui's. Yeah. All thanks to Tui's. How do you feel? I feel like a Tui's or two. Now, Jerome Luai, the kid from Mount Druid, um, well-documented, um, low socioeconomic area. Jerome Luai has agreed um, to a $6 million deal at the West Tigers. <laughs> I imagine it's a, a range of emotion for, for him in terms of, right, he, he's look it, it it all looks as if he's going to be heading out the door at Penrith. We won't, we won't get bogged down in the details of agreed 10-day 10 10 um, cooling off periods. I, I think it's it's pretty clear he's going to be at the Tigers. Um, very emotional leaving a club at Penrith where he's gone and won three premierships. In a row. In a row. Mm-hmm. But this... This deal would will change his life, like winning three premierships in a row will change his life. Mm. But yeah, this deal is going to change him. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I mean, any player that's a spine player that's managed to stick around and win three premierships in a row probably deserves um, a big paycheck like that. And uh, I f- like fair, fair to him, and and good on him. And uh, I feel like the Tigers kind of got the people, the person they wanted. Um, it's not. You know, a big front row that you're paying a million dollars for. This is a, a number six that's played at the origin level, won at the origin level, played at club level, been the most successful number six ever in the NRL era. Um, I mean, if you're a Tigers fan, it's it's yeah, it's a good signing. Time to get excited for Tigers yeah. fans. They've been, yeah, plenty of reasons not to celebrate. Clean out of the board, which I actually thought was going to, hinder their ability to go and attract a guy like Jerome Luai or Fanua Blake. Mm. Like, or oh, they seem unstable, but um, Richardson there is, uh, looks to has got, got the man that, that they all wanted. And mm. Jerome's the type of player that you can build a team around. It's an exciting half combination moving forward with him and um, Jaden Sullivan, who have had a bit to do with it, the Dragons. So very positive signs for him. I think, I think back to like my experience, Cheese when I, you know, I'd, I signed a, a very good deal at the uh, at the Bulldogs, and it and it is life changing. Like mm. I, I was a lad from Liverpool, where, you know, not struggled, but you know, we we just got by as as kids, and you know, you play this sport that you love, and you get mm. you, you get this deal. It's like it it, it becomes almost life changing, and Jerome Luai is getting a way bigger paycheck than than I ever did, and. You know, he'll be able to set himself and his family up for life if he mm. looks after this properly. It's yeah, and it, it's not only that. It's like you were saying with the social economics. He's inspiring a lot of young <clears throat> people from Mount Druid that there's a way out of you know a bad situation and and being able to set it yourself, your family, your future family, even yeah, your kids and stuff. You've been able to set them all up for life. Um, or at least give them the the best upbringing that you could possibly give them, um, just by I guess chasing your dreams and 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 knocking out your goals. Um, you, you've got to feel happy for him and mm. his whole family involved. And I I think it's what also it is is it's it's not the end of his football career. It's literally the start. Yeah, I would say it's the start of his NRL career and him. This is the biggest challenge, like winning three premiership, but going to a, a, a struggling club as a spine player, um, hopefully he takes that on and, and he wants to, I guess, really cement himself as one of the greatest, you know, number sixes of our NRL era um, and being able to help a team like the West Tigers out. Um, that 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 in itself is, is a massive goal that he could set himself and I'm sure he has. Like, you don't get to where you're at 
without being able to, um, I guess, you know, strive for your for your dreams and your goals and and not have that passion to um, try and make a difference. So um, it, it was obviously a challenge getting three in a row. Of, I don't think many people have done that, um, but now it's it's a it's an even bigger challenge. Yeah, I, I think so. A couple of points you, you brought up there: the struggle of growing up in a poorer area, like it. it it is influential and be contagious and show people that there is a way out through through something like sport. It doesn't necessarily have to be through criminal activity, which can happen. I know that happens mm. in Liverpool and a lot of young men, especially young men. It's like, you know, it's it's sport or it's gangs yeah. is a is a way of life. And I think with Jerome, what he's done, he can make people in that area proud. Mm. I was listening to a, a podcast actually with Ricky Hatton. The, English boxer and he's from a council estate in Manchester and when he was fighting Floyd Mayweather um, he was like he was from the same sort of areas as Ricky Hatton he was from the projects yeah. <clears throat> and he was saying I reckon I make my people proud like he when he went back to his council estate he didn't like driving his car he had like a nicer car and he was like <laughs> fuck I feel a bit like a bit of a twat here <laughs> driving this car here like you know I want to be humility. able to rate <laughs> relate to my people mm -hmm. where he was like fucking Floyd Mayweather's like oh I've got you know 500 grand on the pinky and whatever <laughs> and he was like I wonder if anyone in the projects is going oh fucking good on him like you know what I mean but I think with Jerome Luai he stayed true to who he is um, and money obviously changes you and being a professional athlete cha changes the person mm. you are but I think those people um, can be can be proud of the the type of person that Jerome Luai is and they would get a sense of achievement and seeing one of their boys go out there and not yeah. only be successful on the football field but be rewarded for it and I think it's a it's yeah. a huge thing for for anybody in in that sort of community that sport can help you achieve your dreams mm. and maximize your potential as far as footy goes it's it's kind of the easy option would have been take you know, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand, and stay at this highly successful team. Like that's the, yeah, that's almost the the easy route. Um, so for him to take on this challenge, uh, it's pretty awesome. What What do you reckon he'll do to a club like the Tigers? I'm thinking they're they're a young roster, like a lot of rosters are, but now he's 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 got to manage the expectation, and he's also like, and this is twelve months away, yeah. so it's it, it's a funny situation, like. What was it like for you, geez, when when you were at the Melbourne Storm, you'd agreed yeah. 12 months away, you're going to a, a different circumstances, going to a, yeah. a more well-established, successful club. Yeah. But what was it like? Oh, I guess it was all right because, like, the boys were happy for me. And I'm mm. sure, like, everyone at Penrith is happy for him that he's he's been able to do this obviously everything we've already spoken about and it's like it doesn't really it doesn't really hinder any that's how I felt at Melbourne it didn't really hinder anything like mm. all the boys knew I was I was set ready to play for Melbourne and give my all um it's not really you know it's not like you don't respect the time you had there or you don't love everyone that you're still playing with right now you just you've signed a contract with another team for the following year to, to support I guess your family and um, build some security around your life um, and I think he it would be the same for him and um, probably going off topic but that I like the Shane Richardson comments I don't really know him at all but um, it seems like he's the type of guy that can help lead um, West Tigers in the right direction just he knew that he had young young props and and players that they can they can build up he just thought that um, this is kind of what his comments alluded to. It's just he saw that they needed someone in the spine. And as Benji is a very similar to coach or player to to Jerome Luai, as they're kind of off the cuff, I think um, they can do some good things together. And um, with the signing, that just attracts more people with interest to be like, all right, they've got Jerome Luai, they've got some other pieces coming. Um maybe they are a genuine option for you to go to and, and try and make a difference. Well, they've been crying out for this big fish for such a long time. I remember when Latrell Mitchell came off contract, the Tigers were in from. It seemed like any big name player that mm. came onto the open market, I think yourself included, you know, the, the Tigers were looking, but they, they found it hard to, to get a kill. 
the dolphins then come into the competition that increases the you know, you know the difficulty in landing a marquee player mm. this is huge news for the tigers yeah not only in their recruitment but also their attention you think of a guy like um utoya kamanu that you know on the in and around the origin squad i think he played for the blues last year one game like he now it's like i'll look here and go i think i'll stay mm. because we're building something here and there's a few of the younger players that will have hope yeah like and yeah. that's all you need sometimes you just need that little bit of hope that your club and your team is going in the right direction i had you know um I had uh, Shane Flanagan speak about you know, if they land for Nua Blake, it gives them hope that Ben Hunt will stay because he sees the club going in yeah. the right direction. It's, and, and, and I know it's 12 months away, but you're right. I think for Jerome Luai, obviously he's been in that magnificent system in Penrith. I think we'll see a different approach. Mm. Like with, with him under Benji's rule, which Benji, this new coach, lot, lots of reasons to be excited mm. but you get a guy like jerome in there like i don't know if there is a, a better pot the potential for benji and jerome to wear together and what could manifest from that mm. is is huge because like you say very similar styles of player yeah but also how they'd see the game and how they'll bounce ideas off each other as well so i just think that like if i look at everyone that's off contract there's not there's probably he's probably the best player off contract for that team like yeah they've they've got the ultimate player that they i guess could have signed that was possible of signing and um yeah i think and it's be interesting to see how jerome goes without nathan because they've been playing together since they're 12 years old and yeah. i think some of ivan cleary's comments kind of fueled the fire in, in jerome about um taking on that next step and that next challenge so um it's definitely interesting but where does it leave the Penrith? Well, j just be before we go on to where it leaves Penrith, I think for, I don't know Jerome Luai at all, but I think he comes across as the type of guy that takes things personally yeah. and he's got a fuel and a desire. Yeah. And I think this, this new challenge for it to be, I want to, I want to prove to everyone I can do this. Yeah. I want to take it. Imagine that I've won three in a row. Who knows what's going to happen in 24. But I'm going to show everyone what I'm, what I'm made of here, and I'm going to uh, uh, cement a legacy where people go, mm. you know, we've looked. If it, if he can say take the Tigers to a, a premiership or take them to being, let's not get that far. Yeah, like what's of, what's like, what's a success? What would yeah. you consider success? Well, for if the he Tigers? can if he can take them to like top eight, top yeah, four, maybe win a premiership. Who knows? Like then, when people look back and reflect on the three peat of the Pembroke Panthers, maybe. Jerome's influence and legacy is increased. Yeah. If he goes out, if he goes and achieves these type of things, he mm. seems like a very driven person. Yeah. Uh, and it wouldn't surprise me to see him take this team on his back. And he and he has that ability yeah. as well to go, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take the game by the scruff mm. of the neck. Give me the ball. For me, he, he seems like a guy that likes proving people wrong. Yes. And he like genuinely loves it, like loves proving people wrong. And you know, sh shushing the haysayers and the naysayers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting. It is. I think in terms of where this leaves Penrith now, they've lost great players before. Yeah. And they'll lose great players again. This I, is. I was going to say a similar thing. Like, like they lost him in the first half of the grand final. Yeah. And Cogger stepped up, and I, I, it's just hard with teams like that that have just got systems in place. Um, it's hard to see them falling off. Um, you know, a cliff anytime soon. No, they're, they're, they're not going away. And I think mm. sometimes when, when somebody leaves a club or an organisation, that can drive people to want to send them out as winners. Yeah. So the fact that they all know Jerome's going, and who knows who, who else they might lose this this year, it's, I think it's a, it's a massive compliment that all the clubs want their players. So they're going to try and get the eyes picked mm. out of them. I think they've re-signed Edwards. Obviously, Nathan's there for a very long time. Fish just re-signed. Yeah, so the, the 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 foundation's there. But what it does, it, it gives them a goal to so, send Jerome a, a winner. And now it opens up, 
you know, eight fifty, I think the offer was to him for that for them to either promote from within, which I think there's a couple of players there that potentially could fill that spot in season twenty twenty five, or they go to the market and the obvious one is is Tom Dearden, where you think a young twenty two year old who'll be twenty three, twenty four by the time he comes available, like is he now looking at the the Penrith Panthers as a genuine option? There was talk of him being a million dollar player. Is he now on the hit list for the Panthers? Or even like why would the Panthers, if you're Shane Richardson and Benji Marshall and the, the key decision makers, like why are you limiting yourself to players off contract? Like mm. that is a prize asset. Mm. Like I've got the Penrith number six jersey here. You get to play alongside Nathan Cleary, be, come and be part of this championship team. Any five eight now in yeah. the in in the competition and over in the Super League is looking at the going. Oh, I'll have some of that. Mm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you're a five eight, <laughs> a decent one is at that, and and they've got eight hundred thousand, and you're getting twenty wins a year. Pretty much, like it's very enticing. Yeah. Well, I'm even thinking, and that, that's what they've done. The, the, the organization is, they've done what Melbourne and and you know Broncos back in the day have all done. That process of becoming great, you pay cheaper price for yeah. for players that are, are are probably worth more than what you're paying them because you just elude them with success. And and we're footy players. We love winning. We're competitors. We 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 love being as good as we can be, and you know if you're going to take a hundred, two hundred grand less to be at a club where you think you can really be successful, it's it's hard to say no sometimes. Yeah, well, for me, the worry um, as a Bulldogs fan, as a as someone that's not on the football staff but you know part of the club, is will Matt Burton get his head turned? You know, like Penrith would be foolish to limit themselves to only players off contract because yeah. it is so lucrative to, to go and join that mm. team. And I think Matt Burton was obviously involved in the system. He's done that spring that spr or sprung out to me as being like a potential signing for them because mm. he's been there. Um, you know, he knows he knows what it's about. He's got good relationships there, and yeah. he's a he's a quality player as well. Well, it's definitely like, interesting. I sincerely hope, and it was just it was just something that springs to mind. I, I hate it that we we get naive and we limit ourselves to like players off contract. Mm -hmm. it, it, the game's gone past that now. Like yeah, you know, Adam Fenua Blake, classic example. You know, th things change, but Penrith will be scouring the market to see who their who their best signing could be, or there's maybe there's someone playing. Yeah, and if if they've got. Good number six that they can promote within. Mm. What can they do with what they've got in the cap to buy yeah. someone, you know, another yeah. great player? Yeah, it it because really there's not much weakness in that team. But no, yeah, you know, it's um, but it, but it's 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 great news for Jerome Luai, yeah. and for for the Panthers, it's just it, it's just it's par it, for the course. They just play on yeah. pretty much six again. Yeah. <laughs> It really is, but um, one guy who, well, has signed um, that there has been some speculation around is Jack Wellsby, mm. the English player. We had him on a couple of weeks ago. He spoke about you know the potential and interest, but it looks like he's um, signed, sealed, and delivered it at St Helens. Yeah, I did see that interview, um, but I feel like after watching his World Cup campaign, his games for England against Tonga. Um, it'd be interesting to see him test himself in this, in the NRL environment. It's not knocking Super League, but it's just there's only been a few, I guess, Super League players. Not not a few, but a lot. A, not not too many that have come over and been super successful, and especially spine players like Josh Hodgson, probably one that comes to mind. But I can't think of in my era, like a lot of sixes or sevens mm. that have come over and been highly, highly successful. Yeah, it would have been interesting. Like, and obviously Jack's agreed, I think, till 27. Three, three years, yeah. Yeah, so he's, you know, potentially could still come. Uh, I think the Dragons are 
Um, I, I read that Shane Flanagan was showing a keen interest in him. Um, but yeah, congratulations to St. Helens. It shows what a club they are, what they're continuing to <laughs> build. Um, because he's one of the hottest prospects in in mm. World Rugby League at the moment. So yeah, congratulations. I was a bit torn. I was like, I, I want the English game in St. Helens to do well. <laughs> like, is it best to have him there or is it best to have him like, you know, personally and for English Rugby League to yeah. have him come out here and How demonstrate? Old is he? He's like twenty two. Is he? Yeah, he's twenty two. Yeah, laughing, twenty five, come on over. Yeah. Like <laughs> honestly, like I I played with him and doing the interview. You I was, won the, I was, didn't he win the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in... That was three years. So at 19, he did that. He was a teenager. Teenage dirt bag. Jeez, um, I didn't know he was that young. Yeah. That is... Ma even at 22, I'm looking across from him. I, I see him all, but I'm like, fucking hell, you. Yeah. Like... Yeah. Uh, and I guess in other news, the battle for... Um, Adam for Blake. Blake. I think Shane Flanagan has said he wants... He's hopeful... An answer by Christmas. So mm. maybe even at the time this gets released, he could be signed, sealed, and delivered at the Dragons. He's he's obviously only coming to Sydney. I think the Tigers have said they're out. Doesn't look like the Bulldogs are going to make an offer if you believe the report. So it's. Yeah, look, I think the reports might have scared a few mm. um, contenders away because that's a, a big, big lucrative offer. Um, but yeah, like you were just saying before, it's one of those signings. If the Dragons can get there, there's belief yeah and that's all you need at a club you need some a tiny bit of belief can and bring the whole standard of the club up yeah a bit of belief bit of hope mm. like even the mood it it, it invokes on the fans like mm. they 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 go to the game you know they comments on social media yeah. and it all acts it all adds up and all makes a difference mm. like it gives them no, actually, Dragons Junior for New York Blake. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, <laughs> it gives them that little bit of hope, and the mood around and the vibe around the the organization just completely changes. So, I'm I'm fairly sure we're the same age. Really, <laughs> you and Is Fanua Blake, me and Fanua Blake. Does that seem funny? <laughs> you just look so different, <laughs> like so different. Yeah, well, how old are you? Turning twenty eight. Same age. Um, but yeah, he'd, he'd be a, a massive signing for um, for, for the Dragons and mm -hmm. um, yeah, it'll show that they, they are going in the right direction. He's such a good player, man. Yeah. Like, not not many people have the footwork he's got. That's it. It's at like, 120 yeah. kilo, maybe 130 at the moment, being old AP, <laughs> AFB. Better, he, be, better not say too much bad he's, stuff. He's a scary looking man. He is. <laughs> he's scary, man. Um, man. He's so hard. That late footwork at the line. and oh, What did... Well, look, Kawatu just re-signed as well, didn't he? Yeah, I think he did. Like Massive. A like a very long deal as well. Like a eight mil, eight years. Yeah. Wow. They got some money tied up in their edges. <laughs> Jeez. Um, we're going to take a quick break from this podcast to talk to you about AG1. Now, this is a product I've been taking for over a year now, and I absolutely love it. It gives me all of my daily nutritional needs in one easy drink. All you have to do is put in one scoop of AG1 into a nice cold glass of water, and you are set for the rest of the day. The cupboard has been cleaned out of tablets and powders because all my needs are met by AG1. The power of routine cannot be underestimated. And we all know how small habits lead to big wins. Some of those big wins for me have included better gut health. My clarity, especially in the afternoon, has improved so much. Gone has the mid-afternoon slump. AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement. Now, as humans, we all share that same basic foundational needs. That's where AG1 take care of everything. This supports your body's needs like nutrient replenishment, gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. AG1 is the supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. And that's why they've been a partner and I've been a user for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1, a buy round exclusive. If you try AG1, you get a free one year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com 
forward slash buy round. That's drink ag one dot com forward slash buy round for our exclusive Australia wide offer. Check it out. A couple of questions from the fans. Well, we've got only well, have we just got the one? We just got the one question <clears throat> directed straight at you too. Why does Jimmy like his neighbours? Well, I live on a great street. Well, what's the story <clears throat> behind Jimmy's Neighbours? Um, no, the Neighbours, the show. Do you know? Oh, Neighbours. <coughs> yeah. yeah Ramsey Street. Did you ever watch it? No, no. I wasn't much soap opera sort of vibe. Mm. Well, in, in answer to your question, uh, who was the question from, Charlie? <laughs> anyway, why do I like Nick? Yeah, it, it, it's been in the in the vault for a while. Um, <laughs> why do I like Neighbours? Well, do you watch that? Those not, any, shows? not anymore. I used to. So in England, it was on BBC One, like the ma- the big, like the main The Australian channel. version? Like uh, that's the only of version. Course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they play it the same episode twice a day. So they play it like one o'clock and then at 5.30. Hmm. So big, big deal. Yeah. Um, when I lived with me two mates, we'd have it on a series link. We weren't allowed to watch it without each other and yeah. massive blow ups. But why did I like it so much? Well, some, even though the storylines could be horrendous and often repeated, for example, and I say this again, um, Harold Bishop, he, dra- he drowned in a swimming pool. They couldn't find the body. <laughs> and like three years later, he just turns up because he had amnesia. Like, <laughs> fucking bollocks is that? Um, well, let's. So one of my one little of my, cup of tea and neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Um but well, cause they, like they had some great actresses on there, didn't yeah. they? Like there was this, I, actually I don't think I've watched ever one one, 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 one of my mates still goes on about um she was she came into the show, she was called Pepper Stager and he he, he like fell in love with her. <laughs> he was like I, but she was a short lived character, she was only in for a couple of months and then she went away, so um, yeah, there was obviously great talent in a, in a time where you know accessibility to things were different. So watching the neighbours was was Best. very very entertaining and obviously good looking people involved in the show. And I also had a little bit of a soft spot for Cole and Susan Kennedy. That like, you're talking gibberish to me. <laughs> like. I know, you got no idea. You're like, yeah. Did, did you? Back to like series link though, um, I'm like one of those guys that likes to know what's happening in advance. So if, I, if I'm watching a, a show of my missus, I'll like when she goes to bed or when I've got free time, because I get a lot of free time, I'll like watch the whole thing. And then I'll oh. rewatch it with her and I'll go, I'll pretend like I know what's going Like I'll, oh, I'll pretend, really? oh, I think he's going to do this. Oh. <laughs> no <laughs> way. Oh, she's definitely done it. I, I know it's her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Just look what, like what? an absolute mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> what shows are you into at the moment? No, I watched, I, I don't, I haven't watched many shows, but um, there was this one series I watched. I think it's only four episodes. It's on Netflix. I forget what it's called, but it's about the um, it's about the Nazis when they uh, it's a it's a good show. It's got that guy from Now You See Me in it, but it's about like um, when the Nazis were taking over every or like taking all the um, artifacts or like the history of of places and um, it's a good show. Real different. real light hearted show around the festive period. Yeah. No, it's not light hearted at all. No. But um, I'm going to try to search it up now. Because it, 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 if you want, you should watch it. It's really good. The acting in that. All the light we cannot see. Ah, I think I've heard of that. I've yeah. not, I've not watched that. No. I'll, I'll put that on the list. I'm watching. Yeah. There's a, a good English show on. Nah, not on true. Stand called uh, <laughs> Inside Men, and I'm. I'm oh not, yeah, I have seen that. I'm not. Don't. Yeah. No, I haven't I've got, seen I've, it. I've got. I've got, I I've got one it. episode to go. So <laughs> I haven't if, seen like, it. Like that would be. I'd throw one of these two his cans at you <laughs> if you told me what happened because I'm on the edge of my seat ready for how it finishes. But uh, anyway, we'll just about wrap that up. But basically, that's the reason I like ni- like neighbours. Mm. Good looking people, half decent storylines, and you know it mm. was our it was our bonding time with my housemates as well. And if you want to look like a genius in front of your missus, just watch the shows pre 
her watching them. That's a fair effort, that boy. Uh, geez. But there's a tip though. You got to make sure you press play again. Ah. So the red, you know how it's like the the watch it because it, ah, it's it'll already have watched. Like that. It'll have the already watched yeah. loading bit. So yeah, just clean up your uh, evidence there. Yeah, you, you you're a smart man, cheese. You're always thinking. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, it's been a great year, uh, cheese, and no doubt we'll be back yeah. in January. Enjoy the time off. Enjoy the Christmas period and thanks for all our listeners uh yes thank enjoy you enjoy the festivities around the christmas period i'm gonna go run through a few toys and and some something defraud because <laughs> because <laughs> i'm starving <laughs> all right take it easy cheese take it Good easy merry christmas everyone